in teaching half of the truth concerning calling. I'm currently working on a project in my class in school for my master's project. Um, I'm creating a podcast for my project, actually, called Call to Create. And the purpose of this program is to help um, Christians and unbelievers to not only come into a relationship with Christ, but discover their way of bringing their calling out. It wasn't until this week that I realized that I, I was teaching the cart before the horse and that I was going to empower them to do work, but I wasn't going to put, empower them to maintain the work because righteousness and holiness maintains the work because anybody can start working, but without a relationship with Christ, we burn out, right? And how many of us have, has, have ever experienced burnout? One, two, three, five, one, two, five, seven, okay, praise God. All right, so honor your calling. Say honor, honor. Your, calling. your calling. Ephesians 4 and 1, as a prisoner, I'm going to make y'all work. I'm <laughs> sorry. Just, I just have a lot of energy right now. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a what? Life worthy of the calling you have, I have a thingy right here. Lord, praise God. There it is. All right. Live a life worthy of the calling you have received. All right. Let's talk about it. So, question. How many of you are called by God? Okay. All right. Called by God, called by God, called by God, called by God, called. Clear you called by God? You sure live. Next question. How many of you are walking in your calling right now. I'm in my bag right now. One, two, three, four, five. Let me, I just want to make sure we're in the same church because the, 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 I had just, okay, let me just go back. Maybe y'all didn't understand the first question. Okay. How many of y'all called by God? Quay, put your hand up. Hey, girl. Okay. I just want to make it, take a mental scan. Okay, hands down. Here we go. The Bombay. How many of you are walking in your calling right now? Quay, I'm about to come back there and get you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I don't want to lie, Pastor. Okay. How do we go from, from 100% being called to 75% maybe operating in our calling? What, caused the, what is causing that divide? Somebody tell me. What you got, Miss Shante? Okay, anybody else? They don't know what it, they don't know what it looks like to walk out. We don't know what it looks like to walk out the calling. Anybody else? Pastor. Comparison. Comparison. That's a bank. He a preacher. Uh, my man right there with the Mr. Hand. Uh, people equate our calling to a specific title or position. Okay, do y'all agree with those answers? Okay, now let's, let's go to the third one. Let's go to the third one. How many of you honor the calling that you've been given from God? Ooh, boy, it done got tight. It done got tight. We was doing good. Somebody was like, woo on the first question. Now y'all like, what time church in? Because, okay. I ain't never seen y'all do the wave in the church. <laughs> like, the only strong yes is Malachi. And Khalil, you, you honor your calling? Okay, okay, okay. I mean, he do. He is faithful. Okay, now, to honor our calling, which I can see, I'm thankful why God gave us this lesson, because just like me, we have been building our identity off of our work. We have been building our identity off of opportunities. And some of us, we have a desire to do something, but because we haven't had the opportunity, we feel that we're not in position. If you, if you, if you agree with that, say amen. amen. So because I have not yet had the opportunity, or thank you God for this, or because the opportunities are not frequent, I often feel like I'm out of order. 
But somebody say, that's a lie. lie. Okay. So let's talk about it. So what is a calling? Again, tonight, we're going to talk about honoring your call. Honoring your call. After tonight, all of us are going to be activated just like Paul. He said, uh, uh, and I want you to lay hands on them and quicken their gift. My job tonight is to not only quicken your gift, but to quicken your desire to agree with the call God gave you. My job tonight is to push you into holiness. My job tonight is to kick you into right standing with God. That's my job. When you leave here tonight, you're going to have such an awakening on the inside that you're no longer going to battle with comparison. You're no, only, you're no longer going to be indecisive concerning what am I supposed to be doing? How many of us at the start since, since January 1, we've tried to figure out, it's a new year. What am I supposed to be doing? Raise your hand. I'm talking about stress. Like, I just want to know, like, okay, I mean, because I've had success. I done did this. I done did this. I pretty much know this job. I feel like, hey, come on, come on, dreamers. I feel like I'm supposed to be doing more. Raise your hand. If you're not satisfied with a cuss word, rest. How many of us are comfortable with stillness? That's it. We really need this lesson. Okay, here we go. We really need this lesson. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All right. A calling is more than a vocation, role, job, or activity. Check this out. A calling is a heart posture and a way of life. So how many of us are called? All of us. So what this is doing and what this lesson is doing is putting us all on the same level. There is no special people because we preach on Sunday. Because we're going to get into this later that to be honest with us, to be honest with you, those who preach don't have a, a golden ticket to heaven. It would be nice because I feel like we've been preaching pretty good lately. But we don't, we don't get a golden ticket because we preach in his name, we prophesy in his name, but, okay, Ephesians 4 and 1, check this out. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a what? Life. That word calling means, this, this messed me up, Pastor Mott. Word calling is a divine invitation to embrace salvation of God. A calling. It had, no, it had nothing to do with dreams or a goal or a five-year strategic plan. I don't see a degree in that. I don't see um, I, I don't see homes. I don't even see money in that. Let, let's take away the mysticism of how to operate in our calling. Let's take away the mysticism of how to honor the calling and our purpose. A calling simply means to be invited into salvation with God. That's it. But what are we being invited to? What are we being invited to? How many of us feel like this picture? Our phone is ringing, you know, on the screen it says God, but we like, I don't know. And it's like, it things to be, back in the days, the phone used to vibrate, the old phones, and you hear it, you pick it up, and in order to stop the phone from ringing, you pick it up, and you immediately what? How many of us been hanging up on God? Okay, praise God. Now, check this out. Our calling is inviting us to live a holy lifestyle. What's my calling? To be holy. I, I really hope this just simplifies our perspective concerning is God pleased. It's not how many people got saved after we preached. 
It's not did they come to my meeting and take notes. It's not I put up an event and, no, and, 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 and 25 people came. That's not calling. That n- none of the things we do that work, those things are not the sum total of why God saved us. Okay, check this out. One thing or one area that God is, in, is inviting us to is to, number one, please God. There's three of them. Number two, free us from sin. And then come here, ambassadors. Number three, empowers us to free others. Our calling, remember, is the divine invitation. I love this part. You know how the Bible says, for many are called, but few are what? Because everybody, and this may sound crazy, but it's the Bible, everybody is not called to the divine invitation. Because there are some that were formed or created for honorable use, and some that were formed and created for what? Dishonorable use. It just so happened that by the grace of God, he called us to what? Honorable use. Like, we should be thankful that when he said honorable, dishonorable, honorable, dishonorable, I'm like, let me slide over. Because I want to be honorable. Okay? Now, so, I like number three because if we accept our calling to please God, if we accept our calling to be free from sin, then I get the power to be an ambassador for Christ. Something, something that's crazy about our church and that I'm realizing is that we do not take our calling serious enough. Because if we did, we would have a different posture when Satan presents himself. 2 Timothy 1 and 9, who saved us and called us to a what? holy calling. You know, back in the day, and there are still churches, especially old school churches who, holiness or hell, right? It's, it's this like fire and brimstone type teaching and they deem holiness being covering up their body and wearing long skirts because holiness was, you know, for women was making sure that you covered yourself up. You didn't wear any makeup. You didn't wear any earrings because holiness means you had to be plain and abase yourself and make sure that you're not tempting the men. Holiness is still right. If they would come into this church and they see y'all walking around with pants, sweat pants, cro- you, you said Crocs and crazy socks, demons. Because back in the day, holiness was something that you performed. It wasn't something that you embraced. And if we be honest, let's go Bible, Khalil. If we be honest, the Bible says that we can't even be righteous on our own because there is no righteousness in her. Who? In us. We're going to talk about that. So, uh, uh, called us to a holy calling, not because of our works. You do, you do good in your ministry. You, you, you do good when you strategic planning. You do very good at budgeting. But that doesn't qualify us to be called. But because of his own what? Purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus before ages began. And this is the part that that I get excited about because simply this, God called us to be holy and blameless before he created us in Genesis chapter 1, or Genesis 1 and brought us, informed us in Genesis chapter 2. But then sin came in by way of deception through Satan. And why is understanding this so important? Because the most threatening thing to Satan is not a good gift. The most threatening thing to Satan is a good heart. I tell Khalil, I've been teaching Khalil this all the time. I said, why do you use your gift? Why do we use our gift, Khalil? Praise God, help people have fun. Because I'm doing this to teach him that, yes, you're gifted, but I'm not going to let you build your gift, build your identity off of your gift because your gift doesn't belong to you. But many times when somebody else can, ooh, y'all, 
when Fiona pray and, and when Bria pray and when Gabby pray and when Brittany pray, it's like they got grown people tongues. Like they tongues come from heaven them itself. My tongues like happen for three seconds. They can do parables in tongues. I'm like, how do you know how to do parables in tongues? They got full language dialect. They can speak four translations of tongues. Never knew that. I didn't have the same set. But I know Jesus. But if we compare our gift to their gift, it often makes us feel like we're not as holy as them. Because the holy people know how to cry out. The, I'm talking about, especially like, y'all, have a, y'all like, it, it's just crazy to hear Apostle Michelle when she, when she starts to exhort and then she kick in them apostolic oh, and then that hand go like, like that. But I'd be like, but demons, y'all better just run because y'all done made them mad. And then she, she got this little thing. She'd be like, she get a claw hand. Like, oh, my God. But it's like, now that's holy. Come on, y'all. I remember when we first got to this church back in the day, and there used to be all these, because our leadership team was older at that time. Like 30, no, 40s, 50s, mean mug. They didn't smile. They didn't crack jokes. They didn't wear tennis shoes. They was holy. They wore heart, soul, Stacy Adams, skirts, dollies, slips. You know what I'm saying? If you came in here with, all, if you came in here on on communion and you didn't have on solid black, you get in my office right now. Did you not know that the Bible? So you know what I'm saying? So back in the days, we conformed, Jesus is good, we conformed to the image because we thought that their image was right. But oftentimes we see today that we conform to an image that didn't last. And that's what happens when we start to compare our holiness to somebody else's. You may be conforming to, I'm going to say this, a cheap image. You may be conforming to an image that's fake. Boy, I love you so much. You may be, fire God. You may be conforming to a replica, a form of godliness, but denying the what? Power. Did we, yeah, we talked about this scripture. Okay, okay. Okay, here we go. So, this, this, there are two sides to the story of calling. This is what changed me over, the, over this week. Realizing that, Robert, you can no longer teach do calling without be called. Because you have to be both. Like, we've gotten to the point to, like, let's say you, like, last Friday we had a platform. We had people that came up and they were used by God. That's great. I'm thankful that our church gives opportunities for us to exercise what we can do. That's beautiful. But if you have opportunities to do, but you don't have B, your do will be exposed like the sons of Sceva. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Y'all, you doing but I don't know you. Because the power is in knowing, not doing. I would rather be a, okay, okay, I'm going to say this, God, but I'm not saying this in the way that it's going to sound. I would rather have no responsibilities and be a righteous brother than become a leader and fall because I built my ministry off of persona. That's why we have great leaders falling and families coming into destruction 
because they built their ministry off of persona. So when people are going to their church, they're being wounded, hurt, thrashed, and threatened because the leader didn't have the heart, but they were raised because they had the gift. And something that we're going to talk about is one, one of the most special things about AFC is that we don't raise gifts. We, get, we raise righteousness. There's a couple reasons for that. There's a couple reasons for that. Check this out. Okay, please, slow down. Our central calling is to be holy. But we can only accomplish this with whose help? The only way we can live a halfway decent life. Because even on our best holy day, we got up first fruit. Boy, I had a good time with Jesus. I made the prayer line and I prayed by myself. Man, I fasted today. I read my scripture. I ain't cuss. I made the church early. I took notes during pregame. Woo! I didn't even cheat on my fast. I waited to after church to eat. Woo! You know, usually we cut it off at six. You know what I'm saying? Let me get a little some, little zaggies. And then I'm gonna go, no. Nah. I, I knew it we could we could eat at six, but I waited to after church. You still trash. <laughs> we, we still filthy what? Rags. Without Christ, we can't be right. We just can't. Even with Christ, when I want to do good, evil. If we only focus on our calling to preach, to teach, to prophesy, to build, to create, or monetize, which is holy, we're missing the foundation that holds these actions together. God is not saying don't do these things because when Jesus ascended, he descended gifts amongst men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edification of the body of Christ. That's our job as spiritual leaders who operate in the fivefold ministry. We have to do these things, but we have to be holy. How we do it. Because the Bible says that I will give you pastors and shepherds who are after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. So I can still be a pastor, but after my heart, not his. You don't want that. You don't want us to be out here leading you, but feeding me. You don't want that. So I found that Satan desires to have us focus on doing instead of being. Because being is holy. Being holy is what defeats his schemes. I say, what? It's it's our posture that defeats his schemes, not our ability to fight. You go, man, because I ain't never been in the fight. But I'm holy, so when I pray, God responds. So it, I used to be so intimidated. I used to be feel. I used to feel so insufficient because I ain't never gotten to fight. I ain't smoke. I ain't drink. You anointed, but you ain't never been through nothing. You know that we. You know sometimes you hear this narrative. If you ain't been through nothing, you ain't anointed. That's not true. That's not in the Bible. If that was true, Jesus would be. He ain't never seen. He ain't throw it back in the circle. Like it's Jesus. So you telling me because Jesus didn't sin, he's not anointed? That's not true. For our, y'all listen to this, for our youth, those who are watching, and our kids, even, okay, even adults who feel like you're missing out or I, I, I got time, 
You don't have to experience to be experienced. You, 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 you don't have to, you know how they say, test drive the car before you buy it. I, I'm telling y'all, I ain't never even attempted to slap nobody. Ain't never been slapped. But I could talk to a spirit, a principality, and a demon, and they comply. So we don't have to have this super chaotic experience life testimony to translate those experience into righteousness. We don't need it. Like I love a, a Pastor Amar's testimony. He like, bro, I wanted to be a pastor before I even knew it for real. I wasn't really out there in the street, but when that man opened his mouth, he'd be like, he got God in his mouth. Yeah. I tell him this all the time. But you don't have to do a lot to be a lot. All right. Honoring the call to holiness is a form of spiritual warfare. I think I got one more left, and I'm going to let y'all go. We'll come back next week. We'll come back next week. I, ain't get to, I, got, I got some more stuff in there, but I ain't, get, I ain't make it to the slide. I would rather y'all, I would rather have it. Anyway, uh, is that okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, buddy. I love that man. Thank you, Lord. Oh, man. The reason why I love you, I love that man. Because he's being trained the right way. I ain't never asked him to do nothing for me. Every Sunday, he get my stuff. On Fridays, he come get my stuff. He'll work hard over there, and he'll come get my stuff. Don't know why. I ain't never asked him. But I ain't going to tell him stop. <laughs> my boy. Uh-huh. Give me away. Cash. All right. So let's talk about it. Righteousness or living in right standing with God is more powerful than working for God. You can put in 29 letters to lead ministries, be approved for all of them, and still be out of order. Man, they ain't, they ain't picked me for my ministry. I had a video. Come on now, come on now. Man, I had a, man, I had a PowerPoint. Y'all know how territory we get around, around nomination season because we, we didn't get ordained. But you know what? I bet I'd be over outreach. Hello, anybody? Amen lights. But it has nothing to do with works. Check this out, y'all. God would rather us live for him than work for him. I would rather you Live for me, love me, worship me, love others, enjoy the fruit of your own labor, love on your family. The Bible says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your might, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second is as the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I would rather you love me than do your work so you can be loved by them. I'm going to say it again. I would rather you love yourself than love the love you get from them because of what you do. Because you preach and they applaud, then we get, a, we get this self it's like self-satisfaction because of look at what we did. But that's how it gets dangerous. Because it starts to be about what we do and not what God did. So as we go into this year, as a ministry, we have to pivot from why didn't I get the opportunity? Thank you, Lord. To I'm the opportunity. Like, I don't need an opportunity to do something for me to be in right standing with God. I just want to be in right standing with God. 
That's all I want. I was listening to this song. Uh, it said, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to what? See you. Y'all, I really would love to worship tonight. That was in my heart. But to really think about, like, it's not about, do you know how stressful it is? You know do you know what the stress is? I, there was a study that talks about the physical labor that a Sunday preacher has is even greater than the strenuous factors of an NFL player. Because athletes, they're working their body. But when you're working in the spirit, you have to utilize your mind, your body, and your spirit. That's why they say, man, my virtue is low. Because literally, when we pour out, I give away a part of me that I can't get back. I can't. I can't go to treatment and get it back. I can't go, get, I can't go to my physical therapist and get what I just gave back. Because I gave a eternal essence away that I had to sacrifice for. That's why what we do is so important and you don't want to do it frivolously because he says walk worthy of the calling for what you have been called because as you do it, you can't get it back. You can't get it back. So what y'all just did on Friday, you ain't going to never get that back. The only way to be replenished, he said come unto me. All ye who labor and are heavy laden and what? I will give you rest. But because I've called you to work, Jesus, because I've called you to work, you have to rely on me for rest. That's where we go wrong. Because we, we, we don't mind working, but we use alcohol for rest. We use t Instagram for rest. We, we have lost the fact that we are holy. And so in order to get, I'm just so drained. Well, what's the, a trip? Jesus, a trip will not fix spiritual drainage. A, a relationship will not fix Jesus. Your loneliness is not because you're single. Your loneliness is because you are divided between interests. You're divided. It's because we haven't reconciled with our now. I'm holy. So when we're not in right standing with God, here comes loneliness. You know what comes with loneliness? Indecisiveness and a lack of discipline. I don't know how we get over there. <laughs> a lack of discipline. It's simply because we forgot. I know I got a body, I got good eyes, and we got lashes, and we got nice shoes and stuff, but that's not you. That ain't you. You are body, mind, and what? Spirit. Okay? So God would rather us live for him than work for him. All right, Matthew 7, 22 and 23. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord. You know what Lord means? What does Lord mean? Just, somebody, what does Lord mean? What do you think Lord means? Yes, ma'am. He is our Heavenly Father. That's good. Somebody else. Creator. He is our Creator. Our master, the babies, is uh, adults, give me some. Hello, Katrina? Authority. Authority figure? Right. So listen to this. Lord, Lord, I'm acknowledging you as my sovereign ruler. Check this out now. Did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons, deliverance center? And do many mighty works in your name. Verse 23. But then will I declare to them, I never knew you. But 
I call you Lord, not just once, twice. Y'all remember when he said, when, he, when uh, the, the light shone, shone, shine in Acts chapter 9 and Saul falls and then uh, Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me and kick against the prince? And, and Saul, a persecutor of the Christian, voice say yes boy I kick thing into overdrive because ain't nothing like knowing not only your that your leader but your spiritual mother is agreeing with you in the spirit when, when, when <laughs> that time she was throwing ones like magic city I saw it but I couldn't see it but it was confirmation Baby, keep going. But I don't build my sermons for applause. If you are leading a ministry and you're preparing your presentation for them, we're doing it wrong. Because whether they take notes in your meeting or not, whether they show up, whether they come to your Zoom meeting, whether they say, oh, yeah, we're going to participate, and they don't, the Bible says, do what you do as unto the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in what? Now, that's holiness. Holiness is saying that my motive is Jesus, not them. Okay? So, uh, uh, I think this might be, okay. So, honor your calling. Somebody say, just say, just say. shout no. no. All right. No. Satan would rather us work for God, but not live for God. He would rather us work for God, but don't, don't live for him. But I must say, living for God is not impossible. I don't know who that is for. But living for God is not impossible. And are we gonna, we gonna, I, I really want to save David for next week. We're going to mention him a little bit. But if living for God was impossible, David would have been disqualified. If there was anybody who should have been disqualified based off of works, it should be David. Because he got a record. My boy got a record. I'm talking about he, 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 he got a Tyler, player, a Tyler Perry life. Like, we can make a, I wish somebody to make a Bathsheba movie. Like I'm telling you, that right there, I'm talking about something. The anointing isn't preaching or laying hands. Clear. The anointing is not playing drum. The anointing is not 
uh, playing the keyboard, right? The anointing is not miming in GA. The anointing is not a tribe of Judah. The anointing is not leading Bible studies, preaching on Sundays. That's not the anointing. Is it an expression of it? Yes. The real anointing comes from saying what? You anointed? Say no when he say, what you doing tonight? You, 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 you want to be anointed? No. Say no when the tingle come. I, I, I talk about the tingle. I'm going to tell y'all about your pastor. You know, praise God. I'm going to tell my business. I'm going to tell y'all. I'm gonna say, I don't know what, what type of, these dreams been upgrading. I don't know. How, I don't know if y'all been in the same position. I woke up to a dream. I woke up to a dream that was, I, boy, that was virtual reality. That I'm talking about, that was the Apple glasses, the, v, the VR Android glasses. I said, but, is somebody in here? Boy, and I'm trying to figure out, <laughs> why we, what, when, when we get here, it's because I've been doing good saying no awake. <laughs> some, of y'all, some of y'all don't know how strong you are. So the only time he can defeat you or attempt or tempt you is when you're asleep. Because you have enough courage and strength and ability to say no when you're awake. So that's why he has to wait until you sleep. You're not being tormented because you sin. You're being tormented because you have the will to say no to sin when you're awake. Effective works are byproducts of a surrendered heart. At this point, majority of us are doing something in ministry. Pretty much all of us. Even the babies doing something. Usher, greeter, dance, parking lot, you're doing something. So in order for it to be effective, we have to have a surrendered heart. All right, I think it's the last one right here. So what separates religious from righteous? Religious people pursue holiness to elevate themselves. But righteous people pursue holiness to exalt Jesus, understanding that holiness isn't a show. It's safety from the evil one. I think I'm a, man, there's a scripture in the Bible, and we're going to talk about this next week, where Jesus actually prayed a prayer. I'm like, why would you even pray this? But Jesus prayed a prayer that goes like this. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to save them and keep them from the evil one. I said, hold on, bro. Like, if you had the opportunity to pray for us, why wouldn't you just pray the evil one away? He said, no. Because I need you to fight the good fight of faith, because without the fight, you won't have the ability to say yes. Jesus saved us from sin. Because sin isn't safe. It's destructive in all forms. Sin is destructive in all forms. Something I was thinking about today uh, when I was cutting my grass is there to praise God. (laughs) Praise God. It was about to rain. So I was literally, I was on lunch. I came home. I put myself in the air fryer. I was like, shoot, let me go ahead and cut the rest of this grass real quick. But I had, on my, I had on my shoes and everything, looking crazy. And it didn't even rain. But something I was thinking about earlier, and then, and then I think that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last one. Um, is this. Be mindful, church, of the subtle influences. Because what I'm seeing that he's doing and trying to do in me is he's trying to take subtle jabs.
if I just, if I let you hear a subtle remark, because the, the goal is he's not trying to get you to sin immediately. He's trying to walk you into it without you disguising that you're on a leash. So some of us right now, we can see it, but it's like, it ain't really a big deal. It's subtle. It's like, he ain't really saying much, but he talking. That's that's physical and spiritual. Like, he say, hey, in the morning, he not coming at you, but it's the way he look when he say, hey. So you can't hold nothing against him because he ain't doing nothing wrong. She ain't doing nothing wrong, but it's like, hey, why you look like that? Just say, hey, regular. (laughs) Just say a regular, hey. Don't even say, hey, say hi. And put a little ur in it so I know you ain't been trying to be. So it's, 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 it's the slight pause. When you scroll, you see it, but you you know, keep going, but it's the, it's like, dang. <laughs> it's the, it's this right here. Is that right there? It's, 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 I already ate. But I need something else. Because something that God is, I'm literally finding out now, is that I have to fight against gluttony. Because it's a matter of our family lineage. So I'm having to literally make a conscious decision like, bruh, this is not just you just like to eat. Like, you like to eat. <laughs> like, there's something driving this. So I'm having to, like, have to have a fasting regimen to, to beat this flesh and make it my slave because it's not fornication. It could be overindulging in sugar. It's not, it's not blatant. It's, it's not. For a lot of us, it's not blatant stuff. If you're not, if you're not, if you're good, you're good. But for a lot of us, be mindful of little things. Now, of course, there's the other side of it is he's coming like a roaring lion. Because I know what he's trying to do for me. The reason why these images and these impulses and these desires have been coming lately is because I'm in a season where I'm growing and I'm getting stronger with God. So now he like, foot, I got to find a way to get him back to pornography. I got got to find a way. So what I'm finding is I have to be mindful of how much I entertain images that are half pure, half not. I don't mind going on Facebook because I use it. I don't mind going on Instagram because I use it. But I also use it. You you, you have to be mindful of why are you choosing these things? Why are you eating? Is it to fill the void? Why are you communicating? Is it to fill a void? This will be my last thing. I'll, I'll be quiet. I'm putting, down, I'm putting down my stuff, Khalil. Here you go, bud. The reason why, be mindful this week. Be honest with yourself about why you want to do what you want to do. Investigate your motives. Because if we do that as a church, we can have a leg up over the plans of the enemy. Because what we're coming into right now is literally a season where we can get whatever we desire. But where some of us are missing the moment because we're battling between two decisions. We're battling if we want to honor the word or if we want to dishonor God. But I, wanted, I just want to say this as one of your leaders here. Do not negate 
your promise for temporary satisfaction. Do not miss what God is doing right now because you have a plan versus God's plan. For some of us right now, we're in a position to where we have a desire, we have a plan, we have things that we want to do, but we're not seeing movement and we don't have what we think is clarity. But silence isn't dismissal. Silence is not dismissal. Just because he hasn't talked doesn't mean he's not going to respond. Because we're giving up in the wait for the response. Don't do it. Do not give up while you wait. Okay? All right, I'm done. I love y'all. Please, please. Woo! Praise God. Please, y'all. Think about this. Honor your calling. Next week, we're going to finish it out, okay? Yep. Uh, can y'all bring the slide back up real quick? Facts. They ready. <laughs> Dang. They done cut the hole. <laughs> they done shut the live and everything. Uh, which one y'all need? All right, home. Go back, Cleo. All right, right there? All right, hold, hold tight right there. All right, go ahead. Um, anybody, I'm supposed to say, anybody have an offering? We get offering in the back. We're going to go ahead and do announcements. Oh, that's them. That's them. That's them. That's them. That's them. You're good. Okay. AFC announcements. Singles and marriage ministry is April 15th. Thank you. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes. The menu theme for singles is down by the fireside. Singles will be having a bonfire. See Sister Melanie or Minister Alicia for details. Go. For marriage ministry, the menu theme is wings and things. Mm. See Deaconess Gabby. Women's Hat Day is this Sunday, April 14th. They are requesting $25 to be in the fashion show during service. See Deaconess Deneen for details. Apostles' 18th pastoral anniversary with the 1950s sock hop <laughs> party is on April 20th. Tickets are now on sale, $25 for adults and $12 for children ages 5 through 11. Pastoral love offering is April 21st. TCO and GAD are excited to invite you to attend our spring college fair on April 27th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. See Brother Charles Raglan for details. Youth ministry is April 22nd at 7 p.m. See Sister Francine or Deaconess Brittany for details. Youth Sunday is April 28th. The theme is 70s, 80s, retro. Tribe night <laughs> is being hosted by the tribes of Zebulon, Levi, and Joseph on... April 28th at 7 p.m. See Deaconess Bria, Britt, or Tejo for details. Like and subscribe to AFC TV on YouTube to get notifications for new content. That's our announcement. All right, bet. Let's get out of here, y'all. Let's get out of here. Y'all yeah, can stand up, y'all. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, Malachi, you want to pray us out? Come on, bud. God, thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for the, um, for teaching us sweet and power. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you, um, for everything you've done for us, and thank you for um, the 